Hello students, in uh, this video we're going to explore um, three cases of boundary value problems. These are second order ODEs and um, I would encourage you if you um, haven't solved second order e ODEs that you go back and you watch some of my videos on solving constant coefficient second order ODEs um, and that you do some practice with them because uh, I'm going to go through that part of this video rather quickly. Um, so I'm assuming that you know how to solve these equations already. Um, anyways, we have boundary value problems, not initial value problems, because notice that um, uh, we think of um, the uh, values here as going from 0 to some length L, and um, I don't have uh, derivative information. So that's not an initial value problem. I have um, a boundary value problem because I have value... Um, I have values for y at um, different values of x. All right, so uh, the first thing I want to say is um, this uh, equation that I put a star by here is very important. Um, I'm actually going to cover that case in a, another video. Um, so I'm just going to focus on the two cases to the right. Um, I will say something about this equation here. This does pop up with um, uh, pendulum and spring problems. and um, this here on the left hand side, this is Newton's second law, that's mass times acceleration, right, the second derivative, is balanced by some restoring force um, that is going in the opposite direction. And um, so we call k the spring constant, so um, you can imagine that the acceleration is um, proportional to um, how much this, uh, if you were to stretch this uh, position y downward, how much it wants to snap back. Um, so you can think of a rubber band or um, a spring in that case. Um, but more about that in another video. Uh, okay, so let's focus on these uh, two. The first one I'm going to look at is this one all the way here on the right. Notice that if you have y double primed equals 0, then that implies that y primed is equal to some constant a. And um, now if I just integrate that again, um, I have y of x equals ax plus b. Now I'm going to apply the boundary conditions. And in the first condition, um, if we plug in a 0, we just get a b, right? If x is 0, then that 0 times a is 0, so we just get b, and we get b is equal to 0. Okay, great. Now, assuming that l, the whatever, maybe that's a length, is not 0, when I plug in l, I get a times l is equal to 0, but if I divide everything through by l, I get a is 0. And so if a and b are both 0, that means uh, that y is 0 for all values of x, okay? There's a... That's it. That's the only solution that's going to satisfy that boundary value problem. So um, let's take a look at the next one. Here I'm just going to use the characteristic equation. r squared minus pi squared is equal to 0. And if I f that's a difference of squares, so I just factor that out. And I get two distinct roots. r1 is equal to pi and r2 is equal to minus pi. So let's plug that into our um, form for our second order ODE. And I get two exponential functions. But now I'm going to apply my boundary values. And uh, y of 0 means uh, e to the 0 is 1. e to the 0 is 1. So I just get c1 plus c2 is equal to 0. And similarly, if I plug in l, I get c1 e to the pi l plus c2 e to the minus pi l is equal to 0. Now the first case, um, if I just push the c1 over to the other side, I get that c2 is equal to minus c1. So that means um, in the second case, if I plug that into the second equation, I have c2 is minus c1, so I look at that here, and then I can factor out the c1, and I get e to the pi l minus e to the minus pi l. Now, for any value of l, we could actually kind of take a look at a sketch of that solution. Um, some of you might know this as a hyperbolic function, but if you don't know that, um, that's fine. Um, if you were just to plot this um, f against uh, l, making l your variable, you'll see that it looks something like this, and... Um, the only way that this is 0 um, is when L is 0, which would be 1 minus 1. But we said that L is greater than 0. So the only way that this equation is going to be 0 is if C1 is 0. And uh, once again, we're in the same situation. Um, the constant is 0. So um, the only way that we satisfy this boundary value problem is if everything is 0 as well. And um, as I said, in this case, we are just going to save that for another video. And uh, in that video, I'm going to actually solve this boundary value problem. And uh, you'll find some um, interesting uh, um, results here for this uh, mu squared here. Um, and you'll see how this um, relates to uh, this pendulum or um, mass spring or rubber band snapping um, type of physical application. All right, good luck.